Agent Sawyer came about as the result of a stupid studio note that turned out to be brilliant. Was it? Well, yeah. In what way? <laughs> Explain yourself, Clint. I mean, here's the thing. It, it fits. It, it fits. It makes sense. Sure. Does that make it a good choice? Anything Tom Sawyer says that he's a good shot? I mean, so. if anything, his superpower should have been tricking other people into doing the work for him. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's the yes. superpower. Yeah. Just the, the mastermind. Wi- the whitewashing yeah. of the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Once you turn it whitewashing, it's powerful fun. Why, you ain't fooling me again, Tom Sawyer. Like, he's, like, sitting there, like, shooting people, and then he's like, here, take over, and then he just, like, f***s off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to really do this. I've seen you do it. I yeah. mean, you're clearly oh, better. Sean Connery, you're so much better than me at shooting. How about you shoot these guys? And then he's, like, back there just kicking his feet up. Yeah, like, yeah. Reading a magazine or whatever. S- sipping a mint julep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still got it. Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world, where big egos, bigger budgets, and just plain bad luck can make things go horribly wrong. And we're going behind the scenes of these disastrous, never-ending, and often dangerous productions to find out why it was a shit show. Hello, ordinary people. <laughs> How dare you? This is It Was a Shit Show. My name is Routine Ian, and I'm joined by Typical Clint. Hello. And Everyday Ray. Hello. We're pretty Rude. basic. We're pretty yeah. basic here. Yeah, sorry, you guys. You don't have any powers. <laughs> I thought I was extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> just to your parents. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> not, not me. <laughs> not to your hus- loving not husband my of loving no. husband of 10 plus years. 15 no. years. <laughs> Uh, so while I was making the Indiana Jones video, I was watching one of the last video interviews of Sean Connery. In it, his granddaughter, who is actually the one interviewing him, um, asked what it would take for him to come out of retirement to make another film. This is when he mentions that that this is in my that my Indiana Jones video. Um, this is when he mentions about talking to Steven Spielberg about doing Indiana Jones four which might have been the only movie he would have come out of retirement for. But the part wasn't important enough. It was just going to be basically a cameo. A little bit piece, yeah. Yeah. But when he was asked the question, he says that League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was such a disaster and he hated the director so much, he came to the conclusion that movie studios were now run by idiots. (laughs) Um, And he couldn't, uh, he he would only come out of retirement if he could slap a couple of women. (laughs) On movie studios are run by idiots. <laughs> so. <laughs> slap. Gotta slap everybody. Um, well, it's funny that you should say that. We I, we learned a new phrase from Pete Holmes, actually. It's it, when you want to talk about somebody that has scandals in their, their or controversies, you just say scandal noted and you move on. <laughs> scandal noted. So that you don't have like, to address the whole scandal every single time. Yeah, You're yeah. just like, look, the, scandal Kevin noted, Spacey, Sean scandal Connor. noted. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. All right. I, say about. I like that. So he didn't want to, Connery didn't want to be part of the film industry anymore. So I knew League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was um, a shit show. And I remember Clint talking about how much he hates the movie. So much <laughs> so I thought that was actually going to be on your list of your most hated movies. Oh, my most hated movies. Yeah. 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 Uh, the reason why I think that is is because as part of Clint's closet, which I'll bring up right now, as I actually have the comic book that's based on. Uh-huh. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, and oh my God! It's in the pit. It's, it's in the, the it's in the bag. Here, here, in the oh bag. my God! Oh, oh, bag, yeah. I actually found this when I was cleaning out Clint's closet because of uh, some water damage and home repairs that need to be happening. So I pulled this out and I was like, Oh, I should probably. I need to bring this. I'm glad yeah. I found this. I need to bring this for Clint's closet. Um, but the book itself, even though it's written by Alan Moore, who is a weirdo, it's actually a pretty good book, pretty good story. And the movie deviates so far from yeah. it. I mean, that's the thing about Alan Moore, right? Is it like, isn't historically, I mean, we'll probably get into this. I'm assuming. Yes. Wait, wait. Okay. Scandal, <laughs> scandal noted. Scandal noted. <laughs> Look, listen, we're going to talk about it. Okay. Um, I won't, I will not jump the gun. It, did you enjoy the comic book though? I like the book. I have okay. the first volume and I have the second volume. And apparently there's like six others that just get super weird and hmm. uh, super convoluted because, and you'll probably go into this and probably, you'll probably explain it better than I did, but the whole idea is that it's, it's, it's domain free stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, interesting. So that's, that's it's literally, why the characters um, are like, uh, what do you call it? Public domain, public characters. domain yeah. characters. Wow. Well, and it's a great idea so, too. It's like, let's take like, 
It's the literary cinematic universe. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So let's fast forward through Ray and I went on vacation um, and then a whole bunch of me procrastinating, playing too much Zelda. Um, I finally sat down in earnest to research uh, LXG. Um, oh, on, shut up. Uh, yeah, that's what it's It's, it's easy. It's <laughs> easier. Um, on, no, I hate it. I researched, it was researching the film on July 11th in a complete universal coincidence that happened to be exactly 20 years to the day since the film's original release in 2003. 20 years? 20 years. Damn. I am yeah. old, man. I thought, uh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bro. So, uh, luckily for my research, that was like so many retrospective pieces were coming out within hours of when I was re- like re- looking stuff up. So, yeah. that was very nice for me. Yeah. How convenient. Uh, that Go was figure. extraordinarily yeah. coincidental. So, today, let's talk League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. A.K.A. LXG. <laughs> Nerds. At first, I didn't fancy it. I thought it was a little too uh, uh, tricksy. And, uh, but having seen a lot of the uh, effects and the sort of movies now, like Lord of the Rings and uh, Matrix, uh, both of which were offered to me, I couldn't understand either of them when I read them. I think when he first met with the director in his kind of teasing way, he said, you know, they offered me the Matrix and I didn't understand it, so I turned it down. And they offered me the Lord of the Rings and I didn't understand it, so I turned it down. And I'm not sure I understand this, but I'm not going to turn it down. This came out in 1999 when the, the graphic novel series started, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen by Alan Moore and Kevin O'Neill. Uh, Moore describes it as the Justice League of Victorian England. So the first volume takes place after Bram Stoker's Dracula, where Mina Harker is recruited by James Bond's grandfather, Champion. Champion? I think it's Campion. 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 Campion Bond to build a team of extraordinary people. This includes Captain Nemo, Alan Quartermain, Dr. Jekyll, and the Invisible Man. What is Alan Quartermain from? The Solomon King Solomon's King Mind, oh, which yes. is actually pretty good. I've read it. Like okay. after I, after I got this book and I saw the movie, I was like, maybe I should read up on some of these. And so yeah. I read I read like all the books that these yeah. are based on and that it's actually a pretty good book. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Invisible okay. Man is a really good book though too. Uh, the team is tasked with stopping Fu Manchu's evil plans, but it's revealed that the League's financier is Professor Moriarty. I guess that. Yes, I do. guess that in the movie. <laughs> they were like calling him M and Ian's like, do you get the reference? And I'm like, well, it's Moriarty, right? And he goes. I was oh, trying to get her to get the, the M, M from, from Bond. Yeah, he's like, well, no, no, like M from Bond. And I'm like, well, yeah, duh. But like, it's it's he's Moriarty, right? Like, uh, there's no other professor that we could, get it, right? Be. You're yeah. smarter than us yeah. back guys, in 2003. Although, although in that movie, it <laughs> oh makes... no, this was three days ago. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. That's when I was smart. And that 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 reveals like nonsense. What does it mean? It yeah. doesn't. It, it changes nothing. Well, you know what? It, you know what it felt like as I was kind of watching. The, I was watching a recap of the movie. You know what it felt like? It was. It felt like we were re-listening to our episode of Empires of the Deep. Where Atlas was also the the, the <laughs> yeah. bad guy at the end, like it's, it made He's no guy. God Silver Eye, Silver bad yeah. guy. Silver Eye. Uh, so, ironically, the first volume won the Bram Stoker Award <laughs> for Best Illustrated Narrative. Oh. Uh, the second volume takes place during H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Give you an idea of what the what the comics were like. Yeah, it goes through history and it adds so many more like literary characters. Hmm. The Easter eggs alone in the books itself is just enormous and like mind boggling. Like Alan Moore, you pro- you've got more things, you got better things to do, I'm sure. <laughs> than yeah, yeah. Look at all these like even things. like crowd well, shots are like people of like they're all Easter eggs. Yeah, and stuff. interesting. Um, okay, now put your mind inside the great comic book rush of two thousands of the two thousands. Uh, we have Blade, Blade 2, X-Men, X2, Daredevil, Hulk, Spider-Man. So all those big movies. So this is this was like the next big get for producer Don Murphy. So he gets the rights for LXG and, and also Alan Moore's From Hell. And he makes that movie with Johnny Depp. Mm-hmm. It was okay. I oh, yeah, I remember that. that. Uh, uh, was it Heather Graham? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Never seen it, but from what I hear, it's okay. Okay, movie. Anyway, and then he hires James Dale Robinson to write LXG. Fun fact, he's the only writer on this film. So anything that you're about to think is going to happen during this this episode, 
No, uh, it's not he, 20 writers? No, it's, not, it's only him. I was going to say, Just historically, one? all the movies that we talk about are all like, well, then this writer. Well, then that <laughs> yeah, writer. Yeah. And then the script doctor. Yeah. yeah. Nope. This is screenwriter James Dale Robinson. As brilliant as the graphic novel is, it is not a movie. And unfortunately, the reading level of the world has declined. So introducing the literary characters was something that had to be dealt with head on. He is not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's only gotten and worse. That was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Now people are like, oh, what? What are books? <laughs> uh, so they could not get the rights to Fu Manchu. Probably for the best. <laughs> so he was dropped. What the hell was, is Fu Manchu even from? Like, I just assumed that was like a racist caricature that just kind of like. No, he was actually like a character in like books. Like he was like a, just like an evil. Well, they're just but like, he was we very need an evil character. Chinese man. Yeah, exactly. Fu Manchu, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he was, but I mean, he was kind of like Moriarty. Like okay. he was in a couple of books. So, uh, and then they also couldn't get H.G. Wells, The Invisible Man. So the film only calls him an invisible man. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't have the same name because in the book it's Griffin and this it's Skinner. So he's, he's like, I worked with the guy. I think there yeah. was like that kind of like reference to the yeah. original. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rights were so weird. <laughs> just like we couldn't get the invisible man, but we have an invisible man. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you can yeah. copyright the, but not <laughs> any. Yeah. It's yeah. like, what? Uh, Robinson's original script was about the League stopping a terrorist from releasing a flesh-eating poisonous gas into New York's newly constructed subway system. But then September 11th happened, and Fox was like, this gas plot could actually happen, so let's not do that. <laughs> so we he want, changed We don't want to give terrorists any ideas. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Fox was also really worried about funding such a big project about a team of only men. Um, Book characters from strictly from books. White, white men. <laughs> Europeans. Oh. <okay. laughs> so I was right. White men. White men. And uh, requested the addition of a young American character, hence Agent Tom Sawyer. Oh, I thought movie. they were gonna. I thought that was in a reference to Nemo. Like we got to put Captain Nemo in there because he's Indian no. or whatever. Um, this is Clint. You're gonna be our Don Murphy. Okay. Agent Sawyer came about as the result of a stupid studio note that turned out to be brilliant. Was it? What, yeah. In what way? <laughs> Explain yourself, Clint. I, 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 I mean, it kind of, it, here's the thing. It, it fits. It, it fits. It makes sense. Sure. You know, but does it, even though it makes sense, does, it, does that make it a good choice? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, I mean, anything Tom Sawyer says that he's a good shot? I mean, he's not a good shot in the movie. Yeah. But... I mean, so, if anything, his superpower should have been tricking other people into doing the work for him. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's the yes. superpower. Yeah. <laughs> Just the, the mastermind. The whitewashing yeah. of the fence yeah. Yeah. Uh, with a rifle. Like, he's, like, sitting there, like, shooting people, and then he's like, here, take over, and then he just, like, fucks off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to really do this. I've seen you do it. I yeah. mean, you're clearly oh, better. <laughs> Sean Connery, you're so much better than me at shooting. How about you shoot these guys? And then he's, like, back there just kicking his feet up, yeah, like, reading yeah. a magazine or whatever. S- sipping a mint and julep. Yeah. <laughs> They got Tom Sawyer all wrong. Yeah. I, uh, oh, who played whatever. him too? Because I remember the Shane cast. Shane West. Yeah. Who the um, yeah. Walk to Remember. Yes. A Walk to Remember. You know what? In high school, people used to say that I looked like Shane West in like in high school. Not now, obviously, because I'm uh, old and, and, and gross. But uh, back then in I high school you days. you the same nose. Yeah, yeah. I could see it. I remember I pe- see it. people used to say, like, you look like Shane West from... What was the movie you said? Walk to Walk Remember. Did you ever see Walk to Remember? People say, like, no, I haven't seen it. Well, you look like Shane West. Like, oh, that was a you. bunch of girls trying to hit on you. Yeah, yeah. you dummy. That's a, that was a sexy movie for women back then. <laughs> I fucked up. Yeah, you dumbass. <laughs> okay, so uh, director Stephen Norrington was hired to direct the film. He got his start as a VFX artist on films like Aliens and Life Force. <laughs> oh, my God. Cannon! Um, he directed a low-budget sci-fi film called Death Machine in 94. That this is what got him amazing. the job to direct Blade in 1998. Oh, okay. Mm. So, Some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate up here. <laughs> that's fucking, that's like, <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I know, so funny. <laughs> now, but feeling overwhelmed by the size of that film, he turned down, he turned down directing Blade 2. And he returned to low budget with The Last Minute in 2001, which he directed, wrote, produced, and edited and was never released theatrically. But he was in the, because Blade was such a big hit, he was still in the conversation with a lot of people. 
So uh, we're going to go, we'll go into the rest of Norrington's filmography later at the end. I was going to say, because I just was like, not spoiling anything. I just kind of looked at her briefly. I'm like, oh, what? Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, then Sean Connery was their big star that they got. The get. Uh, the big get at 72 years old um, to play Alan Quartermain. Sorry, shut your mouth. He was 72 years old, 20 years. How the <laughs> fuck? He's so old now. He's dead. He's dead. He died. <laughs> he died like, like a few years ago. Yeah, like two holy years shit, ago. you guys. Like yeah. twenty to like like twenty twenty, right? This was... is blowing my mind. Yeah, yeah. He died. What? Yep. He's dead in the ground. Oh my god. But but who, Africa won't. Let I know. Africa won't. As we maybe know. Scotland won't. Let him yeah, die. yep. <laughs> what? In my brain, he was still alive. <laughs> Look, no. so many people will, were dying of COVID around That's that time. True. Like it's probably easy to miss yeah, that. Yeah, put it in the rest. Depressing. Okay. Moving on. So why did Sean Connery sign on? So he mentions that <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> he mentions that he turned down Gandalf, Dumbledore, and the architect from the Matrix sequels because when he was reading these effects heavy screenplays, he didn't get it. He was mm. like it was confusing and it just didn't make sense to him. And so he was just like what is this stupid stuff? So he's kind of alluding to the fact that he didn't want so he and he didn't get LXG either. He just like looked at it and was like I don't don't get this. But he didn't want to pass up yet another, another. like a huge opportunity, right? Mm. Mostly for money, right? Well, like, yeah, but because he probably is like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't get this movie for Gandalf. I'm gonna pass it up. Then he sees it. He's like, holy shit, that was awesome. He's like, well, I, I don't get or Dumbledore, or I don't get it. But it made a shit ton of money. <laughs> yeah, 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 that too. So, which yeah. was more along where his his brain was at at that time. There you go. So yeah, so he's like, I, I don't get it. He doesn't take it. Makes a shit ton of money. Dumbledore doesn't get it. Makes a shit ton of money. Yeah, yeah exactly. Classic, renowned films, and then he chooses the one that's <laughs> yes, exactly this one. We all know where this is going. <laughs> um, yeah. Despite the idea of all these iconic characters potentially being cast as like a like an all star cast, right? Kind of scenario. Um, Connery was paid. Seventeen million dollars to star. Wow! Which Ooh. forced them to cast the rest with much cheaper actors. With pennies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is so, why you don't know anybody else in this movie. Yeah, basically. exactly. However, they did get Monica Bellucci for Mina Harker, mm. but she dropped out, quote unquote, last minute to do the Matrix sequels. <laughs> so she preferred to do that one over. Smart. And then was replaced by Peter Wilson, who I don't know. Before I've, and since. I know. I was like, I don't know who she is or what she's been in or what yeah. she's done or where I'm she went sure, after this movie. Yeah, I'm sure she's did lots of other TV stuff that we don't watch, right? So, uh, Jenny Ray, yes. most of this film was made where? On a soundstage? <laughs> yeah. With Most some of it, with, a lot with, of it. With tinies? With tiny... With uh, mini- miniatures? With miniatures? <laughs> AKA but where? Tinies. Um, in Prague. Oh my God. I was just there. Yes. I remember I que- I said, do you know what this place is? And you're like, yeah, of course. And then this place, both of those locations were in the movie and I don't think you noticed. Oh, I probably didn't. So Wait, the library. The <laughs> What'd you get your, <gasps> yeah. you got your face buried in Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was, hey, sh- I paid attention to half of it mostly. <laughs> half of it mostly. <laughs> that half. Mostly, mostly there. <laughs> that 50%, like 80%. <laughs> uh, but as production started in 2002, historic flooding destroyed $7 million worth of their sets. Whoa. Damn. Including, ironically... Nemo's sub. <laughs> Nemo's sub. <laughs> <laughs> Which did not make any sense anyway. Let's all be honest, that fucking thing... Does not work in the water. You know how in the hell the submarine is like. I think is actually kind of cool looking, but it is so comically large. It's and st- it's, it's stupid. Stupid. <laughs> He's like, this is Nautilus, the sword of the ocean, and it comes up out of the Ken- the Venice Canal. And I was like, the water displacement alone of having that thing in the canal would have flooded Venice. Would have flooded it. Like. You don't, you can't just stick a thing in water. The water has to go somewhere. Yeah. The water has to go somewhere. And I was just like, where are, I I go, just swords are like elegant, like you know, <laughs> tools, right? And this thing is this giant, giant like, behemoth. Uh, I thought that was really funny. It's just like when it pops up, you're just like, yeah. geez, okay, that's, 
<laughs> too big. This is production designer Carol Spire talking about the flood. Uh, not only did we have a studio and workshops filled with 14 feet of water, uh, on our other sets we also had uh, to deal with the fact that we couldn't get any materials to our set while we were building Venice and our most of our crew of people were at home trying to battle the flood themselves, trying to save their home, or trying to get to work over bridges that were closed. It was a bit of a nightmare, but we managed to cope. They're just like bailing water out of their own houses. <laughs> yeah. Getting a phone call for the producer, yeah. like, you need to come. It's like, bitch, I am, I got my own shit to worry <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. about. Exactly. I've got my own stuff going on over here. I don't give a shit about your sets. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Sean, it was bad enough that Sean Connery did a public plea on Czech television for donations and assistance. Mm. Um, for the cr- for the crew. No, 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 for the for the city. Y- right. Yeah, like for the like not just for their movie like help us make a No, no, movie. no. He was doing a thing okay. for like help hey, this is... flood efforts nice. like, okay. across okay, yeah. across the city. Okay, good. Cuz I was yeah. like if they just went on and they were just like we need to rebuild our sense, I'd be like fuck you. This is the tax la- right off. This is the last movie I'll ever do. <laughs> Please. Was it? Yeah. Oh my God! And then he stop died. all with the spoilers. I'm <laughs> <laughs> this movie's twenty fucking years old, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I apparently didn't know he died. So. Yeah, yeah. So that there's was nothing, a spoiler. There's nothing you can blame on me if she doesn't even fucking know he's dead. <laughs> okay, so production was <laughs> delayed by three weeks, but the release date was not. They instead moved to Malta to shoot the scenes that they weren't the crew weren't ready for. So Jenny Ray, you're going to be our Stuart Townsend. Ooh. When we came back, it was like another production. No one knew what was going on. There was no finish date. It was like doing two movies. I have no idea. Where is he from? He's British. He's Dorian Gray. Well, it was a movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Irish. All right. Damn it. I can't do an Irish accent. Okay, we're, he's just going to have to be British. Okay. Now, do you guys remember Stuart Townsend from a previous episode? Uh, yeah, he was going to be Aragorn. Yep. Okay. Damn. Now, you watch that movie and you watch League and you go, thank mm. God. Yeah. <laughs> we dodged that bullet. <laughs> um, there was one line from him that, that we bol- that we laughed at and that was it. <laughs> I got to nail you again. Oh, he's like, I'm so glad I got to nail you one last time or whatever. When he That's was... right. When he's fighting Mina. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, they they come back, they they go to Malta. It was like terrible, and then when they come back, they're like things just take an awkward turn. Things just go bad. All right, so the one of the first things was the model making company behind the scale model of Venice um, completely dropped the ball. They showed up and were just like they they were giving up like false status reports. <laughs> like yeah, everything's good, everything's good, and they got there and they're like, what the. Fuck! Like it was none of it was like done, and it was, was terrible. No, it was. It wasn't even Venice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is Paris. This is Venice, Am- L.A. Yeah. This is Amsterdam. <laughs> um, and uh, so it forced the production to find the last remaining model shop that had availability, and those guys did great. Uh, was the same model guys who did Team America? I have no, I no idea. <laughs> but Connery was currently in a lawsuit with another part production company, someone completely unrelated, about an unmade movie saying they misled him in their ability to actually finance the film. He was claiming that it was a scheme. Just oh, so to... he, was, he was suing this? Suing oh, Okay, them. so it was, he was suing them, not them suing Connery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is his current state of mind about the film industry and, well, and being, in, being in disarray. Now- Jenny Wright, you're going to do another accent. You're going to be our Jason Fleming. Oh, what's his? He's another accented person. Um, I think he's a British he's, dude. Oh, yeah, my God. I only have one English. British accent. He's English. Big Sean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he calls him Big Sean. Is that a this rap is, artist? This is Jason Fleming who plays Dr. Jekyll. Big Sean was paid a lot of money, but wasn't massively interested in making films. He wanted to be playing golf. <laughs> that's, that's actually kind of close to him. <laughs> oh my god, really? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so much. Uh, uh, yeah. So Big Sean didn't really care about being in this movie from the get. <laughs> um, right. So he's just like, I'm 72. I'm fucking done. This movie sucks. Better get me a big payday. Right. Mm-hmm. The things aren't done. Also, I'm pissed about this other movie, and I'm in a lawsuit. Yeah. So uh, on the first day of filming. Connery instantly classifies Norrington as insane. <laughs> <laughs> He's insane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He's insane. Oh, we're going to get to Clint's Sean Connery. Yes. Um, yes. Being an effects guy, Norrington was not the greatest actor's director. Clint, <laughs> uh, this is Don Murphy uh, talking about Stephen Norrington. He's American, right? I could just use my regular. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Steven is an immensely talented guy who comes from a visual effects background. He's extremely good with action and visual effects. I'm not sure he's necessarily a people person. (laughs) This is Sean Connery on Steven Norrington. Unfortunately, he wasn't certified before we started because he would have been arrested for insanity. (laughs) What? Uh, The last time I checked, you were not a doctor, Sean Connery. Okay. (laughs) Also, last time I checked, you were alive, so... (laughs) (laughs) So Norrington got the last lap on that one. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, but also, like, being insane isn't, like, you know, illegal. <laughs> right? Again, yeah. But this is also just <laughs> Sean Connery that's saying this. Well, and also, like, what was, like, okay, granted, like, the movie is not a good movie, right? But what did Norrington do that made Sean Connery think that he was insane? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Sometime in November, awesome. We're so good. The at press, podcast. the press visit this visits the set, and the crew are not shy about talking to the 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 press oh, and right. just like s- mentioning how awkward and cold and like tense the set is. Like it's just just bad vibes all around. Everybody's just walking on eggshells. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they say Norrington and Connery fought constantly. Connery wants to get his stuff done. He just wants to get in there, act, do his thing, and move on. But Norrington is too fixated on lighting and cameras and, and the effects and stuff like that. You he's, know, he's... directing. <laughs> yeah. But he's not focusing on anything what the actors are doing, right? Ah. Okay. So people are saying Norrington is not paying attention to what matters, and Connery is just being old and crotchety and sick of crap like this. Sure. So it was just described as to an go and play golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's described as an old timer versus a, versus a Hollywood rebel. Yeah. Uh, so, mm, yeah. Clint, you'll be our Sean Connery here. Um, this is him when he was asked about how the shoot was going on set. It's been difficult, very, very difficult. There's no question about it. There have been differences of opinions about almost everything. Professional differences, personal differences, you name it. <laughs> so <There's> personal differences. <laughs> Norrington one day is just like, you know what? I don't care for golf. And he's just like, <laughs> oh! Flips the table over. He goes, there's a fuck like, golf. How fucking dare you, Norrington? He's like, he, Norrington comes, you know what? Roger Moore was better. (laughs) (laughs) No, I really like like Timothy Dalton. Yeah. (laughs) Just walking around pushing his buttons all day. You know, have you heard about this upstart named Daniel Craig? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. My God, I just saw Lord of the Rings. Holy shit. I'm glad I didn't pass that up. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay, so one day, according to reports, Norrington did not like the look of an elephant gun. So and like the, the big, the, wide, like the yeah. comically, like cartoony, like you think of an elephant gun. I think of like the ones from like the cartoons, right? The like, big long rifle yeah. with the big the, from bell the beginning opening. of the movie. Yeah, yeah. So uh, and he stopped filming until this was solved, until he found the gun that worked, which took the entire day. So mm. Connery is fuming in his trailer, just like I'm sick of this guy. Like he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm seventy two years old. <laughs> I was, the la- I was the last dragon. <laughs> um, so he eventually just confronts Norrington. They get in this screaming match. And Norrington just gets fed up and goes, I'm sick of it. Come on. I want you to punch me in the face. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. contrary to rumors, they did not fight. Oh. <laughs> so this turned into this whole thing that they got into a fist fight on. Uh, on the set hmm. it Elder, did not happen elderly abuse <laughs> yeah. right would it have been I, well, I mean are you, if you're being abused by an elder person yeah. is that still elderly abuse just, I, think, like, I think it goes abuse, both ways abuse. Yeah. they're like mm, mm. it's not exactly how it works but Connery has has uh, has uh, uh, experience in slapping <laughs> he was gonna get slapped so hard <laughs> yeah so they did not fight Connery just turned his back and left mm. Jenny Ray this is Jason Fleming on the feud. I think Big Sean's instincts were right and deserved to be listened to. On the other side, I think Norrington was really creative and a really huge character. He's a filmmaker and he had an opinion. 
and it was important that his concept for how it should be was listened to. I don't think either of them were listened to enough, by each other or by the studio. That sounds like a very pragmatic, like, rational way of <laughs> viewing the whole situation. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and proud of this, it's like, this Fleming. like, hey guys, let's all just listen to <laughs> yeah. each other. Yeah. Get Big little... Sean, come on. Come on, <laughs> Big Sean. Seriously, that's a, that's, a, that's a rap artist, right? I'm, I'm not stupid here, right? I, like, I don't Big know. Sean? I don't know I the raps. I couldn't tell you. Uh, okay, after the film was done shooting, Norrington penned a letter to all the producers he was currently in talks with with, with about like other films to be made. And he said he was done with Hollywood. So uh, when the film reached the editing room, Norrington could care less. Uh, he was only involved for about 40% of just the editing. Jeez. He did not work on the visual effects. He did not screen the film for the studio. And he essentially just stopped showing up. Just, just wash his hands. Wash his hands, like yeah. just, wow. just like man. Mo- moved on. So according to Fox, Norrington fulfilled his editing duties, <laughs> but uh, editor Paul Rubel took over to finish the film wow. to meet its July 11th release date. This is producer Don Murphy on Norrington. He was really happy with the way things were going, but he never would have been ready by July 11th. He never believed the July 11th date was real. He never believed the hard financial budget number was real. He couldn't be bothered by limitations, and the studio is only concerned about limitations. He was going like, I'm just an artist. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. I, yeah. I'm getting punched in the face by Scottish old men. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm just, you know, I'm an artist. No, fuck it. I don't care You know what? Anymore. I never thought it was going to be done by July 11th. I was just going to take as much time as I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> they know me. I made Blade. <laughs> So, okay. So according to Connery, he was heavily involved in helping salvage the final edit. Showing up and giving opinions, I guess, is yeah. probably yeah. what yeah. that means. And slapping people. But not <laughs> slapping people for not doing good evening. job. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> yeah. Thought I don't need a good slap on the ass. <laughs> uh, multiple production members tried to get Fox to delay the movie into fall, which A, would give them more time to finish the visual effects, and B, not to have to compete with other big tentpole movies, uh, summer movies of 2003. But Fox was committed to July because they also had Master and Commander with um, Russell 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 Crowe coming out for the fall. So they were like, no, we're not going to push it. Mm. So those same people are also amazed that the film came out as well as it did. One crew member says, most of what is being shot is unusable. Most of this most Ooh. of this movie is going to end up on the cutting room floor wow. if it ever gets finished. Wow. Oof. That's what someone said uh, during their set visits. Just like a <laughs> random crew member. Yeah. It's just <laughs> like craft services is like, yeah, this is <laughs> yeah, I've been on a lot of things. There's some shit going on here. <laughs> One of like the teamsters is just like, I've been on a lot of sets and this is uh this is unsalvageable. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So Jenny Ray, you're gonna be this is uh Robinson, the the screenwriter. Okay. About the final the final product. The studio wanted something a little bit flashier, more of a summer movie. Steven wanted something that was more introspective. I was relieved to find out that even though the complexity of the characters had been whittled down, the shadings of those complications still remained. <laughs> Just three scenes of a character arc was yeah. kind of like what right. it really came down yeah. to, right? It really did feel like they were, like, I know that he's saying, like, I'm really surprised that we managed to do both. And it's like, but barely. And not <laughs> <well>. <laughs> Because, yes. Enough to, like, talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, you could see that they were trying to add some complexity to the characters by, like, having that moment with Hyde where he's, like, wrestling with things. And then, like, there was, like, the love story with Gray and Mina, you know. But it's, like, it was, like, bleh, bleh, bleh. anyway, and then back to yeah. explosions. Like, right. it was, yeah. like, move so on, move on. surface level. Yeah, I mean, like, in Hyde's, like, sudden turn of, like, we can do this. We can save the ship. Like, it was kind yeah. of, like came out of nowhere it wasn't even like a a fight between the two of them right like instead of him going like them talking to into it together or debating it it was just like it was instantly like yeah going um i mean i do like that there was a little bit of stuff in there like the little breadcrumbs of like a saboteur but that that reveal comes like way too early and then the idea that nobody can trust skinner because he's invisible and naked um, and but... a thief. Don't forget a thief. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I I did like those little things, but there's very few. Very few. Right. Uh, this is Stuart Townsend after seeing the film. My thought was, 
Jesus, was that really worth six months of my life? <laughs> this is Stuart Townsend talking to. It was too. not. <laughs> I don't like Stuart Townsend, but that's a funny quote. That is really good. <laughs> this is worth, is this worth six months of my life? Which Stuart is kind of like what we always talk about. Was it worth it, like, yeah. just going through all that shit just to have, like, a movie that's so mediocre? Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Norrington did not attend the film's premiere. What? The director? The himself. director did not go did to not, the yeah, film's he premiere. Was done. He peaced out. Yeah. When asked. What, what did he move on to after this? Like, what we'll, was... we'll get to that. Okay, okay. We'll get to that. I'm, I'm not saying like, <laughs> whoa, what do you, what do you have <laughs> yeah, to go to? Yeah. Like, what are just... you so busy? Yeah. yeah. Um, so when asked where he was, Sean Connery replied. Have you checked the local asylum? <laughs> Damn, Sean. Big Sean. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Big Sean. And then when pressed about Norrington being gone, he said, Ask me about someone I like, will you? Everyone else in the film was a pleasure to work with, not him. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> Did Sean Connery kill this guy? <laughs> Holy shit. Maybe. Oh, my God. Um, well, I, we'll never know because he's I dead think, now, as I, we established. I think about Connery being around the same age as like my, my grandparents and like the way that like my grandparents would like like talk about other people. And this is just very par for the course for someone of his generation. Like, <laughs> yeah. Talk yeah. to me about someone I like. <laughs> yeah. Like, just very blunt. Yeah. He's very got like blunt. no yeah. fucks left. No, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah. 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 That's so funny. He's Big Sean. I love it when he calls me Big Sean. <laughs> <laughs> now talk to little Sean. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. Just put little Sean away. <laughs> Put him away. <laughs> or is it bigger, Sean? Sean's a grower, not a shower. They call him perfectly adequate, Sean. <laughs> He's proportionate. <laughs> <laughs> He's average. <laughs> the national average, He's Sean. He's extraordinary, uh, Sean. <laughs> I used to call him the dragon heart. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, we could keep going on that one for a while. Uh, um, he's got a license to kill. <laughs> um, so, okay. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen released July 11th, 2003. It opened against, which may sound really silly, but at the time, this was a massive gamble. Guesses. 2003. Uh, was it a Fast and Furious movie? No. Was it Disney? Pirates of the Caribbean. Pirates of the Caribbean, oh. The Curse of the Black Pearl. Now, at, the, at that time, that was like, they spent a shit ton of mo- yeah. money on this movie. Yeah. Is this going to work, yeah. let alone make money? Right. And so. And seven movies later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Billions of dollars <laughs> yeah. G- yeah. grossed or whatever. Yep. So Fox argued they were not competing with pirates as, quote, its film offers a highbrow alternative for discriminating moviegoers looking for an original film, not a sequel or film that began life as a theme park ride. Oh, just because you're based on some yeah. fancy books, you think you're better than Pirates of the yeah. Caribbean? Meanwhile, Bob Iger, fuck you, I'm going to buy you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they forgot that they had just mentioned that like audiences were illiterate. So like they don't give a shit. Yeah. If your characters are based on like fancy like book characters. Yeah. Well, I think it just goes to show that you can make an adaptation of something as silly as a theme park ride and still make it good. Yeah. I mean, with, and 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 like, but with, like with, with with this, like you can make an adaptation of a comic book. And st- it could still be shit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Even if you have a blueprint, yeah. literal blueprint. It's like you, know. you, if you, you don't need storyboard artists. Like yeah. the storyboard's right here. Yeah. And, and you have the <laughs> have the screenplay, basically. Yeah, right. The story arc. So League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Alex G, grossed twenty three million the first weekend against Pirates, forty six million. Ooh. Alex G's budget was somewhere between seventy five and ninety five million. It made sixty-six million in the U.S., but a total of one hundred and seventy-nine million worldwide. So, so it 
wasn't really a bomb. Like it made, it made us money. It made, yes. yeah. yeah, yeah. So Pirates, on the other hand, grossed three hundred and five million in the U.S. Jeez. and six hundred and fifty-four million worldwide. You know, I'm thinking about my 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 movies or the movies to live for piece that we did for mm-hmm. for Patreon, and you mentioned that you're surprised that I didn't have this on my list. I think I blocked it out <laughs> at, the, at the time because now that we're talking about it, and, we're th- and I'm thinking about, it, I remember as a joke because I would talk about how much I absolutely did disliked the movie i would talk about so much to my brother that as a joke my brother bought it for me on my apple yeah. he bought it for me as a joke on my apple movies and so now it's like in my, there. It's, it's in my in library. library so i look at it every time i go through like i'm like oh this is a good movie this is good. i'll watch this movie then lxg show up i'm like oh jesus fucking piece Christ. Shit. <laughs> this piece of shit so i remembered i own this movie <laughs> yeah and you didn't do your homework 20 years ago I did that, right <laughs> Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 17% from critics, 44% from audience. I feel like the Rotten Tomatoes should be like more like not seven. Because I've seen 17% movies, and I feel like this might be just a slightly like, I don't know, a little bit I don't think better. it's 17%. Yeah. I, I mean, we'll get into it, but like the first half is actually not that bad. Yeah. Yeah. The visual effects are definitely impressive. For... Yeah, some of them. Yeah. Yeah. But like it goes – Way off. It does. It really <laughs> but, does. Like, but I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, I think right. it's pretty bad. I think it's got a bigger, balls. more of a um, reputation of just being a shitty movie than mm. it actually is. Mm. Uh, okay. Later that year, producer Martin Pohl and screenwriter Larry Cohen sued Fox for stealing their idea, claiming they had been pitching a concept between the years of 1993 to 1996 about a team up of public domain characters. Their film was called um, Cast of Characters, which is terrible. It's a terrible title. Yeah. Um, they allege Fox cut them out of the deal. Then Wait, f- what did they shorten that to? Cock? <laughs> Cast of Characters, a.k.a. a cock. <laughs> Guys, think about it. On the poster, cock. 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 <laughs> a big cock <laughs> on the poster. On the poster. Just huge. The biggest you've ever seen. <laughs> right there is Big Sean. <laughs> Big Sean presents cock. (laughs) Big Sean and cock. (laughs) So they allege Fox cut them out of the deal, then freely, freely gave Alan Moore the idea as a smokescreen so as not to raise suspicions of their theft. Their proof of this was that Fox was hiring screenwriters in 1998 to make the film, and this was announced in the trades like uh, uh, Variety. Variety. Um, despite the graphic novel not being released until 1999. So, mm. Alan Moore, lovely, understanding, oh, just the caring nicest guy. Alan Moore. Loves people uh, yeah. and humanity and gave just a great dude. Gave a 10-hour deposition <laughs> stating, if I had raped and murdered a school bus full of retarded children after selling them heroin... I doubt that I would have been cross-examined for 10 hours. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty lengthy for something that's just basically like... Did a, you steal this idea? A rights charge. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he was... I bet he was such a delight to interview yeah. for that. The suit was settled out of court, and this enraged Moore <laughs> so much because he's not able to publicly defend himself. Mm. Mm. Whether or not he, he was given the idea or not. So he just can't say. What you're saying, though, is that like b- part of the terms of the settlement was that he can't talk about it. Yeah. So everyone's just like, Mer. like yeah. we don't know. Yeah. We, we might never know. Okay. Stephen Norrington is the king of shit show productions. I swear to God, this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, especially development hells. So in 2000, he was – so this movie came out in 2003 – so, Norrington was uh, first set to direct Ghost Rider in 2000. So, that's how early, um, so that was right after Blade, but then he did this. Um, but Ghost Rider didn't happen until 2007. In 2001, he was set to direct Freddy vs. Jason, mm. which was later made in 2003. And then also in 2001, The Hands of Shane Chi, Master of Kung Fu. So he was working with Avi Arad about making that movie long before it came out, finally, in 2021. Hmm. Uh, In 2002, he was the first director for the still-in-development hell live-action Akira movie. Oh, yeah, Akira? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, I think it's um, Taika. 
I don't know. When that movie comes out, we'll do an episode about it. Yeah, if that for ever sure. happens. In 2001, he was to remake Clash of the Titans. Didn't come out until 2010. In 2008, he was the first director to set to remake the still in development hell, The Crow. Oh, yeah. Jeez. Um, and that one has been made, and they're looking for a distributor. Last week, last it was Is that about it. Bill Skarsgård? Uh, I think he's Alex Skarsgård, but might okay. be. It's a Skarsgård. A Skarsgård. It's a Skarsgård. But Skarsgård. They, they filmed it. They filmed it, and I think it completed like two years ago. Even with the Skarsgård? Even with the Skarsgård. Everyone's like, mm. Mm. So, mm. We're, we're Skarsgård out. Look, we love a Skarsgård, but not the crow. <laughs> not for the crow. <laughs> We love a scars guard. <laughs> um, and in 2010, he was to make something called The Lost Patrol. Norrington has yet to make another feature film. Really? So he was. Oh so, he, he, so he made this movie, mm-hmm. and him and Sean Connery like butted heads a bunch. Mm-hmm. Sean Connery is dead. <laughs> as so we've, did, yes, yeah. as we've spoiler established. alert. So that was t- so this movie film was released in 2003. He couldn't deign to give a fuck to do anything else after he filmed it and did 40 percent of the editing. Since then, he's been hired to do this. Maybe nah. Do this maybe ah no. Do that maybe no. Over and he hasn't and over made anything over. since. Nope. Not as a director, has he done other stuff? <laughs> like, because his background special effects, has he done anything else? I don't know what he's doing. Um, Brad Dwarf actually gave it the thing, said that he's making a stop motion animation thing in his basement. But he was like, it's going to take. <laughs> well, stand so am I. in the place where you were. And that's it. <laughs> And that was on Parks and Rec, yeah, and yeah. that's as far as he yeah, got. As far as he sold it. <laughs> I spent two weeks on that. <laughs> yeah, it was only six seconds long. Well, according to Brad Dwarf, he said that, like, based off of what he's doing with it, he's like, it's not going to be done for like twenty years. Wow. <laughs> right. So well, I have no take, idea what he's doing. When you do one shot a day <laughs> for a stop motion animation, it's going to take you fuck twenty ever. years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, LXG would be the last live action film for Sean Connery. This is Sean Connery on why he gave up on being in film. I was fed up with the idiot and the ever widening gap between people who know how to make movies and the people who green light the movies. Hmm. So, yeah, he just got sick of it and walked away. But in 2005, Connery returned to the role of James Bond in From Russia With Love, the video game, mm. um, at the age of 75. Based off of the making of that game, he really enjoyed doing that. Well, that's good. Um, I'm glad that he got one last hurrah as Bond, and it was a good experience for him. Yeah. And then, sure. as we all know, the next thing he did was, was that he died. Yeah, he died, yeah. In 2012, <laughs> in 2012, he came out of retirement oh, to voice it. the title role in Scotland's first computer animated feature film, Sir Billy. Uh, in the United States, it's called The Guardian, it's called Guardian of the Highlands. Hmm. This movie is on par with Food Fight. Oh, oh no. my God. Um, also entirely on YouTube. Oh, wow. We gotta is, watch it. Yeah, it we'll is. Doing that later. But same year, but it is awful. Same year as Food Fight? <laughs> yeah, same oh year, my 2012. Goodness. Uh, it is like the same kind of level of like Animation, it unfinished yeah. and wow. terrible. Is oh. there a greasy dick weasel? <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of the greasy dick yeah, weasel. I was like, <laughs> Unless you count. I'm called Big Sean in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Sean Connery died in 2020. As we all know. As yeah, we all know. Yeah. Which As Jenny Ray was it's letting let us know about. knowledge. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, lastly... In May of last year, Disney announced another attempt at League of Extraordinary Gentlemen as a Hulu exclusive film. No other updates on that. Mm. All right. Was it worth it? Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say no because it's like it's such a forgettable like like movie. I, I I think I can agree. Uh, if if people had like gotten like hurt on it or if like I mean. Natural disasters aside with Prague flooding, you know, but I, I think I agree. Like, I could have lived the last 20 years without having seen this movie. And, <laughs> or having it in your and, Apple queue. Yeah. 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 God. yeah. I mean, the, the Can't book, you just, like, delete it? I probably can. I just haven't, yeah. I mean, the book is great. I, I don't like what they did with the Invisible Man in the book because he turns into, like, a rapist bastard. Like it's, it's, yeah, yeah, Alan it's, Moore style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I I could have lived with. 
without this being made. I mean, if Disney wants to take it into like a TV series, like, I think that might be cool. If they, I don't know, if they want to try it out again, that might be cool. But I don't, yeah, I don't think this movie was worth it. I mean, Stuart Townsend was out six months of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I had six months of my life. Gave him something. You know, to do. I was, uh, I was thinking. Like, <laughs> Yeah, what else were you doing, Stuart? No, <laughs> not, was... not at Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah, certainly not. Neither was Sean Connery, by the way. <laughs> um, the idea is kind of cool, right? Like sort of like a agency of like secret supernatural people and like kind of Victorian style. And then I was I was like, well, we kind of got that with Kingsman. Like Kingsman has like a, hmm. a lot of vibe, like those kind of same vibes. Yeah. And like Kingsman was just so much better. And I know like Kingsman is more future, right? And this is like actual kind of Victorian era. Yeah. And so I still think that could be cool to make a movie like that and to have, you know, and I'm not opposed to even having like famous literary figures, although the famous literary figures that they put in there were so random. <laughs> so, and, and like... The, you, when you said like, oh, it's because they were from public domain, I was like, that completely makes sense because there is no other world in which anyone would choose those people to be in a movie together unless yeah. it's because they didn't want to pay somebody rights. But it's like, <laughs> dude, pay somebody fucking rights and like do the movie justice, you know, like have actually like good, interesting characters in there. Yeah. It's funny because what you said, you fell asleep and we only watched the first half and the first half is just fine. It's it's not bad, but it's just fine. Yeah. And then we turned it off the moment they arrive in Venice. Yeah. And then we started it up the like two or three days the next day. I don't remember. Later on, <laughs> we started up, and the movie goes off the fucking rails. <laughs> it goes, like, it's bonkers. Like, it just goes like they show up in Venice to stop the bombs. And immediately they get there and the bombs go off. <laughs> like, there's not even a moment of them, like, trying to get it to stop it. Yeah. Like, they don't even, like, we found the bombs and then it goes off or right. whatever. It's just, just, off the just like, we're here and then they explode. <laughs> yeah, basically that fucking ship took too long to get there probably because it's <laughs> huge. Uh, Captain Nemo, we can't fit the Nautilus in yeah. the docks. Yeah. Giving a, a 400,000 point turn yeah. Yeah. <laughs> instead of <laughs> one of the canals. To get into a canal. <laughs> That's probably why. But then, so not only do the bombs go off the second they arrive in Venice, their fucking plan for how to, like, combat the destruction of Venice is they're like, oh, so what we're going to do is we'll set off another bomb in Venice <laughs> at the opposite side. And, like, the, the two will cancel, the two each, other will cancel each other out. And I'm like, that is not how fucking bombs work. That is just not how bombs work. I'm pretty sure. And it's it's just, like the the pressure of the the blast from our bomb will like hit the blast of the other bomb and it'll just be like, <laughs> and then like it'll stop. Well, listen, Nemo is a scientific genius. If Nemo says it'll work. <laughs> but then like all you've done is you've like bombed one half of Venice, Venice and then bombed the other yeah. half of yeah. Venice. And they're like, we saved all these people. And they're like, how many people were in those buildings that when right? it collapsed? Yeah. And then there's just like th that really dumb moment when Dorian Gray is like, Skinner? No, it was me. Yeah. Like, it's the most stupid line. And then he doesn't even kill the guy. He shoots him a bunch of times and then leaves him. And then Ishmael has enough strength to get out and go, oh, by the way, it was Dorian, it was Dorian Gray. Gray. Yeah. yeah. Like, staggers <laughs> out. He's like, oh, I've been shot seven times. And then, and then he jumps in the most nonsense escape vehicle. That's just a half a bubble nope. and nope. blades. And you're like, how does, how does the that escape work? pod? Do you remember this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like... So Again, physics and they're like, ah, fuck physics. We don't give a shit. And then they, and then they immediately <laughs> engineering. They go in. They go into the. They go into the ship, and he's like, "This is us." And he points out the most nonsensical map, and according to that map, they're going five thousand miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> same. The pod is going the same speed, <laughs> and. It's, it's like just they've like, crossed the entire ocean in two seconds. Yeah, like multiple <laughs> times. Yeah, and then they get. Then the place blows up. And then they're just like, oh, we just need to pull a valve and that will fix all the holes. Like, and then yeah, the ship is the, like floating again. It's the yeah. valve, it's the main valve hole. <laughs> of course. But it was like, Professor Moriarty just like gives off his like whole speech. And it was like, why did you make this video? Why not just sink him and kill him? Like, that record, the Victrola, the. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it was not even, it's not a video. There was yeah. no such thing as video. 
Right? That's true, but they were watching a video. No, that was just for the benefit of the audience. They they were playing a record. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no. They were just playing a record, so they were just, just listening. Hearing. They were just hearing them explain the whole plot. And then for the benefit of the audience, because it's not interesting to have a bunch of people standing around <laughs> listening to audio, right. they were like, uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a device. And the device will be that we will put like fake old timey like black and white footage up here so that you can imagine that's what they're seeing what they yeah. looked like yeah. when they were saying these oh things when really they were probably schlubbing around a bunch of microphones like we are currently yeah you know what they should yes. have just done is just done that same bit in the great mouse detective where radigan has he's got that record playing at the end of the mm -hmm. record that's when they die and just mm -hmm. have vincent price singing goodbye so soon <laughs> that's what they should have done Be that better the better, better uh, that's a better use of better a victrola movie, <laughs> better use of a victrola better movie <laughs> Better use of Sherlock Holmes characters, quite yeah, frankly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah, I think there's an interesting idea in there, but not worth it. Okay. Uh, follow-ups. We have follow-ups? <laughs> All right, let's get into it. <laughs> Following up on the American Graffiti podcast episode, at Johan Song 3207 said... OMG, my beard just shot out of my nose when Ray did the Coppola Godfather thing. <laughs> you come to me on the day of my friend's movie premiere. Yeah, that's so funny. It's all over my keyboard now. Thank you, Ray. Yeah, there you go. A lot you're of people welcome. pointed that one out. Yeah. That was... Sorry about your keyboard, but you're welcome. I still like will laugh about that, too. Like I, Because I think... Because uh, you two edit the shit out of this. So you listen to them all the time. But I'll go back and re-listen to the episodes just for fun. And every time I hear that, I'm like, oh, my God, that was so fucking funny. <laughs> that was so great. There are times where people, like, will quote things, like, later on, like, from older episodes. Like, oh, my God, that was so funny. I'm like, I have no memory I of this. No memory of this. <laughs> I have no memory of this place. All right, moving over to cats. A story that we missed, apparently, was that Tom Hooper did not know what catnip <laughs> was, is. Yeah. So I d people pointed this out, and then I found this. So basically... Um, Tom Hooper who was showing up to Taylor Swift's house to show her the how the effects were going to work mm -hmm. and getting her on board. And her dad was there. I guess her dad's her manager, manager or whatever. And he was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, it'd be really funny if like there's a scene where you, like, you, you like all the, ca uh, the cats get, like, high on catnip. And Tom Hooper had no idea. Again. Really? Yeah. Does not understand cats. Does not understand cats. Which is odd for a man, a well, cat in a man suit. Yeah, what, what's, what's catnip? <laughs> or see, he he's just he's just pretending like he doesn't know because he doesn't want people to know he's a cat in a man suit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so a lot of people also pointed out that Miranda Cosgrove sings "Memory" in the scene from School of Rock because we yes. were talking about like so many people. We we're like, that. how the yeah. hell do we? Where the hell do we know this song from? And everyone was like, School of Rock, and it's like, yes. I don't. But also it might be, maybe, yeah. maybe, but also maybe not. Some some people no, said that like we watched School of Rock with the kids like literally like two weeks ago, and it's like when he's trying to when Jack Black's trying to yeah. get kids to sing, and she goes, she's real quick, memory all alone in the moonlight. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. super quick. Yeah, and so I don't know if that's where I got it from, but then uh, some people are like, maybe it was from like the VHS trailers for the recorded performance of it. And that, and, then, and yeah. then I watch those, and memory's not in it. It they is. Don't... It is for a little bit, yeah. So if some... it is, it's musical. It's... it's not the lyrics. Mm -hmm. The the ones I watched, it never Kay. had the lyrics in it. Somebody in Discord, by the way, if you want to be in our Discord, go find us on Patreon. Posted a video, and they were like, "Remember these?" And I watched it, and it was like that scene in Ratatouille where you're like, <laughs> like, like transported backwards. Yeah. And I was like, "Holy shit, I do remember those!" I remember like, those. Yeah. It was like that ad for Cats, like it's coming to VHS, was like in front of so many movies in like yeah, the yeah. 90s. Yeah. But that did Maybe. have memory in it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I need to watch that one. Yeah. So there were lots of fans of the stage play and VHS recorded performances, but. Hardly anyone unironically liking the movie. I remember there was one, we had one YouTube commenter, I think, who did oh, say, really? like, I, I legitimately <laughs> yeah, like this yeah, movie. Yeah, that, that's why I said there was um, hardly, hardly anyone. Yeah. <laughs> one person. But it was like a lot of people were like real big fans. The, the musical? The musical. So. I like to think that the, every movie out there has at least one person who <laughs> legitimately <laughs> likes yeah. the movie. Yep. I think I mentioned this in, in Discord, too, where I said something like, yeah, watching watching like the old ads for like the recorded stage performance, I could see like if I went and saw it on stage on Broadway and like the spectacle of it, I'm like, yeah, I could see how that would be entertaining because I'm not necessarily going to care as much about 
like having a plot, right? I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm just here to see like really cool dancing and really cool singing and like yeah, yeah. cool sets and costumes because like that's a huge part of like a stage performance is mm-hmm. just the the specialness of the spectacle yeah, of the, it. Yeah, so, the, the theater of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like I could see how it would be more entertaining as a theatrical play, but yeah. like as a movie, no. Nah. 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 <laughs> All right, uh, at C. Thela said, Missed opportunity to point out that the Meow Mix commercial was a better <laughs> musical than this. Yeah. So, the song is way more memorable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I sing the Meow Mix Constantly. You know, more than I sing Memory. Yeah. Ex- yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll see, I, I'll, my kids will be downstairs doing you know whatever they're doing as kids, and I'll just start singing, I want chicken, I want, want liver, liver, Meow Mix, Mix Meow Mix, 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 please deliver. deliver. And they know it's time for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> And then you shake. <laughs> and I feed them in a bowl. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just, I in just one ball. They one all, bowl, yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> tap it on the side of the stairs and they all know to come running. Um, oh, boy. All right. couple random updates. Um, at KBR7171 said that Murderer's Row is not a reference to people who kill. It's a nickname for the 1927 Yankees lineup, which was very good. They murdered opposing pitchers. So saying a Murderer's Row is calling a group of people very talented. There you go. You were so, questioning that. Yeah, I was like, well, because we say that all the time where like people are like, oh, it was a murderer's row of screenwriters or a yep. murderer's row of blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, what does that mean? So I, I, I did not sports know. Sports analogies. Sports analogies. Sports analogies. Mm-hmm. So there you go. It's a baseball reference. Ah, baseball. Um, America's pastime, right? Sure. Just yeah. like mom and apple pie. <laughs> Ma- is mom a pastime? I don't know. Like American, <laughs> American. As American as mom American. and apple pie? I don't, I don't know. Mom's apple pie. Yes, this sounds really gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, at uh, that Pokeball guy said, Clint is the best part of this podcast. Oh, no, what? Oh. I banned him, so he's not allowed yeah. to chat put any more comments <laughs> oh, on I the thought, channel. <laughs> I thought maybe you would just comment on his on his comment. Who? <laughs> I generally do that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> you don't think I don't read those comments. I read those comments. Oh, but thank you so much. Uh, what was his name? At that it? Pokeball at guy. At that Pokeball? Oh, thanks. Thanks, guy. guy. Thank you. Some review highlights at Pool Boy Official seventy one forty eight said really love the podcast ran through every episode within a week. Within a week. Good. That's a lot of us. I don't even <laughs> listen to myself that much. Oof. Good work, guys. Can't wait for more. Even I don't do that. Yeah. I <laughs> love the sound of my own voice. Bro. That's impressive. <laughs> um, at Anti Toast the second. Remember him. One of our first commenters. Oh, no, I don't. But I'm also like, what do you have against I toast? I would remember if he was anti-toast the first. <laughs> I'm pro-toast. <laughs> pro-toast the third. Um, all right. Anti-toast the second says, the thing with your podcast is that it's too goddamn addicting. I see you've uploaded and I think, oh, I can just watch a little the little opening snippet thing. It's always incredible. So I think maybe I can watch the first 15 minutes. I end up laughing so hard that I lose track of time and I'm 45 minutes in realizing <laughs> I'm too late. I say fuck it and end up watching the whole thing. I said this like it's a problem, but it really isn't. <laughs> um, at Love Hate Comments says, you guys have nailed the behind the scenes bit thanks to Ian's research and a good sense of narrative structure and how he unveils everything gradually in an episode. Mixed with Ray and Clint's insanely funny banter and thoughtful opinions. Love seeing the YouTube notification on my phone for one of your episodes. Please continue to make these. And if things allow in the future, yes, do consider a video format. As I, men- as I mentioned, in like, the far future. <laughs> like the um like the antagonists of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen when they were recording their <laughs> villain monologues. Just just, a, just schlubbing around some microphones. Yeah. We did not just, we, just yeah. to, uh, just to picture us standing around talking to a Victrola yeah. <laughs> in our in Victorian black, outfits. In yes. black and white. Looking looking very uh picturesque. Yeah. Ooh, that's what we'll do. We'll just hire some actors to just like <laughs> like lip sync like some really attractive actors just lip sync yes, everything we yes. say. Mm. We'll cast Shane West for me. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. He's got well, nothing else going on. <laughs> well look, if you are interested in seeing what any of us actually look like, might I recommend you go to Patreon and mm-hmm. sign up for our stuff because you can see Clint's closet where I actually yeah. do, do videos of me with my collection of shit. Yep. I'm not as handsome as I sound. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for radio. Yep. <laughs> Um, all right. And then Risen Empire said, I've enjoyed each and every video and podcast you've uploaded. And this morning, I finally caught all the way up. Thanks for the wonderful chats over the last few weeks. Very much looking forward to future content. Clint, I think your Superman cape <laughs> shirt sounds awesome. Don't let Ian and Ray take your lunch money too often. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
I, 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 speaking I, of which, you haven't paid up. Yeah, speaking of which, <laughs> give us your lunch today. Do you want to do the handstand by yourself, or do, you, do we need to do it? <laughs> Lift it up, right? Jingle, 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 jingle. Sometimes jingle, jingle. I do think about that shirt, and I, I, I think about sometimes making another one. <laughs> It'd be so easy. Even without your mom? Or you, is that including your mom? Oh, no, I got, my own, I got my own sewing machine. Oh, that's right. We were talking yeah. about this. Uh, we do have a few uh, Patreon shout outs. We have the, the newest, the trades. The trades just came in. Just got my magazines. <laughs> <laughs> and I have some gossip for you about these five meddling executives. Ooh, I can't we, wait. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the first one is Anthony, Anthony Navarro. But like, OK, let's just say they are not a meddling executive that is keeping up the writers and actors st- strike, okay? So mm, yeah. he's one of oh, the yeah. good people. Yeah. yeah. Um, the th- talks, these are the yeah. meddling executives who are like, let's have talks. Like, I'll also come down to the picket line with you. <laughs> right. I'm going to meddle in your protesting, as a matter of fact. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, the, but I mean, like, for like Anthony's thing, he's like, you know, I, I do want you guys to be paid more. But I'm gonna put like salt water on your hot dog, and you know, just yeah. like sloppy it up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> slop them yeah. up, sloppy steaks. Look, we gotta keep. He's, he's always thinking. Look, like we do want to pay them better. We just gotta keep them a little bit humble. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's, it's gotta, yeah. So take them down a little peg. Yeah. So let's uh, let's take their food and just like put it in a blender. Like that's what your per, that's what your per diem is. So, yeah. <laughs> and it's for the whole day. Yeah. yeah. Like it's yeah. it's it's one whole. Bl- it's your blended. All your meals in one one, yeah. one, blended, yeah. drink. one blended drink. But I'll pay you a living. Work it. Yeah, I'll pay you a living wage though, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, and negotiate really good terms for like residuals and stuff like that. But you gotta eat a hot dog shake. <laughs> it's all about balance, you yeah. know. <laughs> it's like <laughs> maybe he's into mukbang. We don't know. He just wants, <laughs> wants to watch you eat it. We don't know. Yeah. We don't judge. We're not here to kink shame. Yeah, no. <laughs> Our next meddling executive is a uh, Garrett. Not your brother. Not my brother. Not our friend. Our friend. Just this is a an different entirely Garrett. different Garrett. The third, the only other Garrett in, in the world. <laughs> yes, there's, yes. Only there's only three. Garrett. There's and only three Garretts, and he is one of three. Which which is great because we have association with all three of them. <laughs> yeah, your now, brother, yeah. our friend, and then this this and Garrett. This, yeah, yeah. That's his only claim to fame is uh, just being <laughs> yeah. the third Garrett. The only the executive people, people, named Garrett. Yeah, yeah. people He's walk like, up to him, just give him money. They're yeah. like, I want you to produce this because. You're a Garrett. Yeah. I heard that you They're were like, one of three Garretts <laughs> in the whole a, world. That's a strong male name. Have some money. Yeah. Do whatever you want with it. <laughs> and he's like, gosh, thanks very much. <laughs> I'm going to go meddle in some movies. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And also maybe a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Executive Garrett, um, for meddling in our podcast and being part of our Patreon. Right. Being yep. part of our friend. Uh, part of the, our, the, the three. three. <laughs> I'm part glad we, three I'm glad we have our infinity stone of, of Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> the next meddling executive house is, is uh, Ducky Freeloader, who is the top trust fund baby mm. of all the trust fund babies. We call him Lucky Baby Ducky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. It's the opposite of our executive who had like the Scrooge McDuck like money tank, right? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. This Ducky is like freeloading off of parents, the system. I don't know. Yeah. His, his whole office is just a bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, with with just just the ducks. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. The, he, <laughs> and he just has Ernie playing in the background the whole time. Robert, Robert, Ducky. Robert Ducky. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. You, you ask what they're doing, and they'll go just freeloading. Yeah, just freeloading. <laughs> freeloading. What have you been up to lately? You know, freeloading. <laughs> He has his name on every single trust fund in the world, mm-hmm. like just as like a little subsection. Like, yeah. my like you know some rich guys like I'm gonna give all my kid like this is my kid's trust fund, and then the little asterisk like, and Ducky Freeloader. Ducky Freeloader. <laughs> it gets this you know, percentage. That's like, actually really smart because like by doing that, if you take a small enough percentage of like all of the world's trust funds, like. Maybe you got a stew going. You yeah. got a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. You got a bathroom. You got, you you got, got a bed. bathtub full of cash. <laughs> yeah. You got an office full of bath water. And some of that freeloading money is coming our way. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So thanks, Ducky Freeloader. Quack, quack. <laughs> and our next one is Steven. Steven. Oh, Steven. Steven. Spiel? Spielberg? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh Spielbergo? <laughs> There couldn't possibly be another Steven that would want to meddle at this level. Right? I mean, Spielbergo is will just do whatever he wants. Yeah. Like he he's really affable in that yeah. way. Mm-hmm. He he'll just uh just be like, Can you make a really uh nonsensical Chinese movie? <laughs> and he'll fund it. He'll fund it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, Hey, why not? I'm Spielbergo. Spielbergo. Some money. <laughs> 
I got you. He's also very uh, proficient in making those knockoff movies that you see like on the DVD stands at the checkout. At mm. the, you know, like, you know, Disney makes like a Frozen, but then there's like, you know, this other one. Like, it's like really a, cold. Yeah, really cold. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Super <laughs> chill. But uh, he likes to kind of meddle in ones of. Uh, Mockbusters. Like, mock, yeah. He, so Mockbusters. He's Mockbusters. the king of Mockbusters, but specifically Mockbusters. Steven Spielberg Mockbusters. Ooh. So he just finished directing Kansas Johnson. <laughs> And the kooky crystal cranium caper. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's it's on its way to hit uh, number one in the mock, mock busters. <laughs> and, and, Schindler's and, uh, shopping list. Yeah. Schindler's shopping <laughs> East, East Side Tale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, there's a lot of money to be made in mock busters, apparently, mm-hmm. according to Steven Spielberg. So... Thanks, thanks. Yeah. And, and Crita- Cretaceous Water Park. <laughs> Cretaceous Water Park. <laughs> You'll have prehistoric amounts of fun. <laughs> um, anyway, thanks for the Mockbuster money, Spielbergo. Steven Spielbergo. <laughs> Sp- Steven's just the same. And then we have to change Spielberg to Spielbergo. <laughs> yeah. That's good. And lastly, we have Eli. So it could be a From day. From the Bible? <laughs> Eli, yeah. Yeah, Eli's also, they're also. Wait, is there an Eli in the Bible? Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've read We getting it. that Bible money? We got that loaves and fishes money? Oh, yeah. Maybe we can, maybe with this Eli. Just we multiplying can, like, the money? Yeah. Mm, 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 <laughs> maybe this Eli can turn all of our water into wine. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> yeah. It's the great power. Of all the superpowers, is, I have just that. That's he has all just, I can do. He has just Jesus powers. Yeah. <laughs> just Jesus <laughs> That's... So anything that you've heard of Jesus doing in the Bible is what Eli can Eli do. Can do. <laughs> he can take the 40 loaves of bread and fish or whatever, and he can feed a bunch of people. That's it. He can turn but, water into wine. That's it. But but it's also Raising like people from the scenes. dead? That's a considerable amount of power. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I don't know. Were they were really like, were they like really like fully dead? Or is he like miracle maxing it from like, sure, you sure. know, but you know, dead. as a meddling executive, though, he's more interested in raising movies from the dead. Mm. You know, <laughs> they've gone into development hell. He's just He's like, like, rise, I say, <laughs> and be a movie. Uh, it's a great and then the, the rest of his, the rest of his company standing around like, oh, 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 okay, oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Wait, uh, we actually have to do something because we're uh, hammered. Yeah, the watering <laughs> fountain is fucked. It's just <laughs> full of wine. His, his crew's like, we're, I'm so fucking tired of eating bread and fish. Yeah, you guys, yeah, I can't whole, do it anymore. His, his whole office is just full of fountains yeah. so, so he can around. walk across, yeah. walk across it. <laughs> and it's, you always have to walk around the fountains to get out or to get into yeah. something. But if you could walk on water, yeah. it's a direct route. A direct <laughs> Everyone has to like catch up to him. Yeah. He's just, like, he just walks a straight line. He has to you walk. guys see this? You yeah. guys checking this out? <laughs> you should check out this action. Yeah. Long hair and beard. What took you guys so long? <laughs> This is this is gonna be really embarrassing if there's no Eli in the Bible. <laughs> Let us know. I mean, there's Elijah. There's, there's Elijah. Oh, it's yeah, exactly. It's a yeah. short form. See, I know, I know stuff. Well, thank you so much, meddling executives. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, and if you would like to uh, become a meddling executive or anything else, you can uh, join our Patreon. You can find us at Patreon.com/slash It Was a Shit Show. Mm-hmm. It's a good time. We mentioned our Discord a couple times. Um, we're in there, kind of chatting with people. We release director's cuts of every episode and DVD extras. Bonus as, episodes. As we Bonus just episodes. mentioned earlier in this one, we're all three of us are doing a, a special where we are talking about our favorite films and most scary films and all that kind of stuff. So if you want to hear those, you got to be on Patreon. You got to be on the Patreon. And if you like hearing about all of my collection of all my just weird random shit, toys, props, costumes, things like that, I do uh, video episodes of all of my collection that you can see. A little bit of a snafu or a snag with my fucking water problems at home. So all my shit's in storage. But it's going to be busted out soon. We yeah, had a flood. We had a flood, and the whole way basement was wet. And then Eli came over yeah, and turned it to wine. wine, and that shit doesn't come up. Nope. <laughs> now we have to replace all the carpet because it's got wine stains in it. <laughs> Thanks, Eli. I mean, it's not his fault. He just touches it. It yeah. just happens. Yeah. This is well meaning. Well meaning. He's an accidental Jesus. <laughs> Our own accidental, accidental. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> 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 <laughs>